This question comes from our monthly Ask Dr. David Live series. Hope you find it helpful. All righty. Hi, everybody. It's Dr. David. Welcome to our monthly Ask Dr. David Live YouTube special that we have now done several times. Thank you so much for watching. I know that this has been an exciting thing for me to be able to answer questions a little more extemporaneously and to hear from all types of people and all types of questions. I hope that you're getting something out of it too. And of course, please share um, what you learn with us and to share this video as well because uh, you know we'll be posting it afterwards as well as some of the selected questions. But thank you for your support. It's really very appreciative. The first question here. So what is your opinion on B12 shots, safety and, eff and efficacy? Do you recommend oral drops or monthly B12 shots for someone who has a low level of B12 and experience post-COVID fatigue? Also wondering if it's possible to overdose and to take too much orally. Okay, B12. Now that's something that I've certainly talked a lot about through the years. So first of all, we have to clarify something. A B12 shot is a, like kind of like saying a shot of alcohol. OK, um, in that there's obviously different types of alcohols that people can consume, although, of course, a shot of alcohol would kind of work the same way. But, you know, the typical so cobalamin is vitamin B12 and the most common form that's in a supplement is called cyanocobalamin, a version that then needs to be turned into other forms. So before we start talking about actually the way of taking it, I think it's important for us to spend a couple of minutes understanding what that means. OK, so B12 and you've heard us talk probably more about anything about a form called methyl B12. Now, methyl B12 is, is vitamin B12 that has a methyl group on it, which is basically a carbon, not basically, it is a carbon with a couple of hydrogens that are hanging off the side. That is what a methyl group is. Now, to know what is the best form of, but there's, um, I should say, there's also a form called adenosyl cobalamin. There is hydroxyl cobalamin. So one of the important things to know is which forms, if you know, can your body absorb if you're taking it orally, but but also which forms can your body convert one into. Okay, so I, I've talked before about MTHFR in our long conversation that we had with Dr. Lynch um, a few months back about how MTHFR's job is to take folate methylated into methylfolate. Now, there are similar enzymes that work on the B12, MTRR and MTR. And so if a person has a mutation that it makes it that those enzymes will not work as functionally well, then that person may specifically need to be taking methyl B12. But there are other chain, there are other um enzymes that are responsible for making adeno B12. And then the question is, what if a person gets over methylated? Sometimes people will have a negative reaction if they get too many methylated B vitamins. Hydroxo B12 might be the right answer for that person. So we run a genetic test in our office called the Max Function Test by a company called Maximize Genetics. There are other companies who do this as well. This just happens to be my favorite. I find it the most user friendly. And that can really tell me what versions of this a person needs in the first place. Okay, some people, there's another enzyme that you look at that it tells you, hey, you're not gonna absorb it very well at all. And again, in that person, they may do better doing it in an injected form off in the first place. Now, I have been using methyl B12. That is the most common form by far that I have been using in my practice. And I've been doing this, God, it's been over 20 years. Uh, it's back about, two, about 1999, 2000, when I started using methyl B12. And this was something that came to us in the autism community. Autism, biomedical autism has always been the uh, canary in the coal mine, if you will, things that we learn first in the autism populations. We then expand it out to other populations in, um, who have chronic issues and find that usually it's not something specific to autism. So we started giving methyl B12 injections based upon the initial work of Dr. Jim Newbrander, a dear friend of ours in the movement, who did something very interesting back in the day because he, when a family would come in for him with autism to see uh, their child on autism, with autism, I should say, they will, um, he would give them a questionnaire have them only do methyl B12 for three months and then have them repeat the questionnaire in order for them to change to see what was um, to see what changes were there. And, the, and then and what he found was 90 percent of the kids showed some level of improvement in some form of their autism and found that the most common thing was improvements in communication, which, of course, is huge for most people on the autism spectrum. 
So I so this is something that we typically give it a dose of 75 micrograms per kilogram. It has to be made in a 25 milligram per ml solution. It needs to be super concentrated. A lot of pharmacies can't do that. So it has to be an experienced um, compounding pharmacy who can do this. And then it's typically given every third day as a subcutaneous injection, which means underneath the skin. And it, we aim for the fatty. So we have actually a layer of skin. There's a fatty layer and then there's a muscle. And so you have, you're trying to get it into that space in between. So if you go straight down, you can actually go into the muscle. So what we tell people to do is kind of like a, a, the angle of an airplane coming in for a landing, like a 30 degree angle. And that gets it into that fatty tissue where it then slowly releases into the bloodstream over the next three days. And it becomes an extended release version. It hits the muscle, it all goes into the bloodstream pretty quickly. So that's also really important. There are some people who need it more often. I tell them if the first two days are good, but then it wears off, maybe you need it every other day. Some people only need it once a week. Some people tell me, hey, man, the first day or two, my kid's hyperactive, then settles down nicely. They may need it less often. So that's part of the conversation in the first place. Now, in the methyl B12 form, oral can be done not swallowed. The reason why it was done injected in the first place is because it seems as if when you swallow methyl B12, it will be demethylated in the gut and then get into the bloodstream as the demethylated form, so kind of counteracting what you are trying to accomplish. So we have used nasal spray forms in the past, but there's also like a drop that you can put on your fingers, like 1,000 units per drop, so it's very concentrated. It's like rub in the mouth and this, on the inside of the cheek. You wait about 10 minutes, it can be orally absorbed, and therefore not going through the uh, gut. So that's kind of a, a way that we accomplish that. Now, in terms of... Um, you know, so in terms of low levels for energy, I kind of would play the energy um, consideration as to how a person feels with it and how long it lasts in order to determine. OK, and of course, if the oral form is working and you don't have to, to give a shot or take a shot, that's great. Now, in terms of overdosing, there is it does have a, 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 a you know, somewhat of a half life. You know, that's how long it takes to clear the body. Um, and, you know, it's a it, and it can store in the liver some. Now, it doesn't store the way that fat soluble vitamins. Those are E, D. A, K, or we call it the ADEC, actually. I put the letters in the wrong order there. Um, but it does around, but there, it really, I, you don't really hear about anybody overdosing on it. Now, certainly I have seen people who take too much of any B vitamins, but including this, if they take too much, they can get kind of irritable or hyped up. You know, B vitamins tend to give people energy. And so that is, um, you know, just something to work for if you're over energized. If you've got the energizer buddy going there, um, then that may be a sign that you're doing too much. You didn't hurt the person, but maybe, you know, sometimes we have to do less than 75 micrograms per ml. Oh, so I hope that helps. <laughs> If you like what you've been seeing, please hit the subscribe button 